What's up Dragon Nation? I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Space Engineers Tutorials. Last episode we went over the respawn ship and how you can upgrade it to get to the second tier. Now what we want to do is we want to talk about how to get those resources in order to build and get to the third tier. So there's a little bit of work so let's go ahead and get this started. So this is the ship that we built in last episode. We need to get the resources in order to get all this built. Now one thing you do need to keep in mind is the drill was the last thing we talked about. But as you can see it does take, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, it does take large steel tubes. Which you cannot build if we go inside and check that out. Large steel tubes you cannot build with the survival kit. So if you want to get the drill go to production as you see no large steel tubes if you want that what you're gonna have to do is get yourself a basic assembler now the large steel tubes only take iron which it shows right here in the middle it takes three so we can get that from stone but unfortunately we need to get the basic assembler up and running first now in order to get the basic assembler which is actually inside my bad uh, if we take a look, these are the resources it's going to take. It's going to take steel plate, which is iron, which we could get from stone. It's going to take computers, which you make from silicon, which you do get from stone. Uh, the displays, I think, are also silicon, which you can get from stone. Motors are nickel and iron, I do believe, and you can get those from stone as well. Uh, construction components also take iron which you could get from the stone so everything we need to make that assembler we could get from the survival kit i do want to check real quick if i could get to the access there we go production was that right yeah iron and nickel for the large steel or the uh yeah the uh, motors my bad so these are the different ores that you will find in the world all together there are 11 if you count ice now we do have them in alphabetical order i could go ahead and take out my drill but it would just show all these so we'll go ahead and do these in alphabetical order so you can see what these look like so the first one is cobalt ore sometimes you can mistake it with magnesium which is this one right here they kind of look the same so the first one is cobalt then you have gold then you have iron, then you have magnesium, that one right there is nickel, that is platinum, that one is silicon, silver, stone, uranium, and ice. So when you first start out, the only thing you will have is the survival kit, so you will only be able to process the stone itself but once we get up to a certain point we could process everything except for gold uh silver which one's silver this one right here that's silver uh uranium and i think platinum right here those are the four items that we cannot do with the basic refinery we need to get the bigger refinery for that so let me go ahead and grab my drill and we'll get into it. All right, so as you can see right now, if I bring my, if I come up with my drill close to those resources, it will actually indicate where those resources are. Now the drill does have a small little detector on it. 
which at some point we're going to be putting on the ship because the ship uh, detector is a little bit more powerful. But the problem is it requires resources that we don't have yet. So right now all we're worried about is stone. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure, well, let me show you. If we drill straight into the asteroid by holding the left mouse button, the ores start to float off and then you have to go run after them to catch them. Uh, to catch them. So what we want to do is we want to make ourselves a little hole. If we hold down the right mouse button, it'll get rid of some of that asteroid without any ores flying off. It actually just deletes it. So what we want to do is we want to dig just a little bit. Let me go and turn my light so we can see a little bit better. So we're going to dig into the asteroid just a little bit. And once we think we're deep enough so we won't come out the other side. Yeah, that should be deep enough. We're going to go ahead and turn. Let me show you. So we're going straight in. What we want to do is we want to turn 90 degrees either to the left or to the right. Let's go ahead and go to the left. And then we'll dig just a little bit more. So what we did now was we made ourselves a backstop. So whenever I dig the ore, it will actually start hitting that rock back there and the ore will stop. Let me go ahead and dig and I'll show you. There we go, this should be good enough. So as you can see, they do float a little bit, but once they hit that wall back there, they will actually slow down and even stop. Allowing you to pick up that ore and it will not fly off. That also helps you with some of the trash you might leave around the base. So the next thing you wanna do, instead of digging the hole deeper, just go ahead and start making yourself a cavern. So line yourself up with the hole, so that's the bottom. Line it up just like this and just start digging around in a circle, making yourself a nice little cavern in here. Just to give yourself enough room to move around a little bit, which is a good idea for those people who are claustrophobic. Now there is another option that you could do. Right now, I have all this stone, which is just sitting inside of this tunnel. If we want to pick it up, we hit F and we pick it up. But well, what you can do is you can hold down F as you're drilling and you will pick up those resources as you drill. Now, if you look at the center of the screen, the bottom center of the screen, there's a little backpack item icon above your toolbar that will show you just how full you are. Now watch that bar go up as we drill and pick up some of these resources, some of the stone. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time to fill up, but eventually it will. Now, all right, so the game actually crashed on me, which is one of the things you have to deal with. Uh, there's a lot of blo uh, bugs, a lot of glitches in this game, and sometimes the game will just crash. You gotta keep that in mind, that happens. Uh, it's one of those things that you just have to get used to. It happens in this game a lot. So, as you can see, our inventory is actually filling up pretty damn quick. And we're only using the tier 3 hand drill. Now, other ores will be more difficult to drill out and will give you less resources, meaning it will take a lot longer to fill up. Let me go ahead and get some power real quick. But once we have enough stone, we want to go ahead and get our survival kit ready to process that stone. So let me grab some power and I'll show you. So if we go ahead and go to the computer right here on our survival kit, the little access point, hit K. A or I, doesn't really matter. Go into production, make sure that we have the survival kit selected. I'm going to go ahead and set this to make 5,000 ingots of gravel. That's gravel right there. So if we hold down control and shift at the same time, and left click, we can go ahead and set it to make 5,000. Now all I have to do is go to inventory and put that stone in. And it will keep making the gravel until it runs out of stone to process. So all we have to do now, which is your first step, keep filling this survival kit up with as much stone as you can grab. Then once you have the proper resources, go back into production 
and make yourself some of these resources. Now, as you saw, we need the base refinery, basic assembler, the drill, and some conveyors. Now, later on, when we get into the regular assembler, assembler there is an option up here where we could just tell the assembler to build from the uh, ship item, the block, instead of just the component itself. So just go ahead and make a bunch of these as much as you think you'll need. Don't worry about getting it exact because later on you will need more components. They're going to be used. They're definitely going to be used. So you've gotten to the point where you have the components to go ahead and make the... Let me get a drill real quick. Where you have the resources to go ahead and make the basic refinery or the basic assembler which is right there then you have yourself the basic refinery that's the basic refinery that one up there is the basic assembler now with the basic assembler you now have the ability to craft up what we need for the drill which is the large steel tubes let me go ahead and go ahead and enjoy it so we can go to any access point hit F, K, or I. I will take us to the inventory. A will take us to the control panel. And F will take us to whatever we're pointing at. So right here is an access point. So if I hit F, it will take me to inventory. But if I go to that little control panel right there and hit F, it will take me to the control panel. So now what I can do is if I go ahead and go to production, and we find the basic assembler right there. As you can see, we now have our, the ability to make large steel tubes, which we can go ahead and finish that drill. So now we can go ahead and take our respawn ship and pick up a lot more stone. So don't waste too much time trying to get all that stone because eventually you'll get yourself a drill and it'll be a lot easier. In order to be able to use the drill, we need to put it down in the toolbar. What we're going to do is we're going to hit G, find the drill, which is right up here, and we're going to drag it down into number one. And we're going to do toggle on and off. Now that right there is not the best option. If we hit one, it will tell it to start turn on and start drilling. Hit one again, it will turn it off. But there is a better way. So with our hand drill, actually let me get out. If I show you with the hand drill I showed you guys earlier, if you hold down the left mouse button, it will start drilling and resources will start going everywhere. If we hold down the right mouse button, it will just delete the voxel, not leaving any ore floating around at all. You could do the same thing with a ship drill. So if we go into the seat, go into our ship, get into the seat, and we go ahead and hit G again. What we want to do is go to block tools. And then we're just going to dra uh, drag that drill down into number one. Now we have the ability to hold down the left mouse button and start digging out some of that stone. Or hold down the right mouse button and delete the voxel. Now always be careful because that one drill is not enough. Well, maybe it might give us... Oh, no. Not enough room. So it does open up a bigger area, but it's still not big enough for this ship. So unfortunately, with that design, you do have to find resources that are on the surface. So that right there is basic drilling. Later on, what you need to do after you do that and you make sure your respawn is good to your respawn ship is good to go, you want to travel to all the asteroids that are around you. You want to go ahead and try to find yourself all the resources that you're going to need. The first resources that you really do need are cobalt and let's see. Let's go ahead and check this out. If we go to production. So the first one you're going to need is metal grids. Those are going to be very important in order to make the larger refinery, which is the last tier. That is going to take cobalt. So you definitely want to find yourself some cobalt. The other one is right here, detector components, which is iron and nickel. Oh, for some reason, I was thinking there was silver. So I guess the next thing you would need to do is go ahead and build yourself a detector before you start going out to the asteroids and trying to find the other ores. 
Well, the question is, where the hell will we put it? So this right here is the detector for the large grid. This will also go on a small grid as well when you build yourself a small grid miner. Let's put it right here. Uh, we'll get rid of that block and that block. Try to keep the profile the same so that way we can make sure we don't hit anything. That right there should work. All right, so now we got ourselves a detector, but the problem with the detector is once you first build it, it has default settings. If we go into K, go ahead and find the ore detector, what we could do is we could go ahead and turn up the power. Right now it only reads ores at 75 meters. Turn it up, it goes to 150 meters. This right here, broadcasting using antennas, what that does is if you have an antenna on your ship and that detector detects an ore, it will tell you if you're in your suit. So if I'm sitting, for example, I'm just flying around like this in an asteroid. I don't have a drill ship. I don't have a drill on this ship at all either. And I'm going out with my hand drill. The ship is able to detect the ore, but my the uh, hand drill is not strong enough to detect it. But with an antenna on that ship, it will actually relay that information to my suit. Let me know where that ore is so I can find it. Now, the distance on the hand drill, I do believe, is 50 meters. I'm not exactly 100% sure of that. They might have changed it, but that's pretty much it. So, yeah, with the detector, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to all the asteroids which there are a lot. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and find yourself the ores that you're looking for. First things first though, before you move off, as you can see, I have a little beacon right here that says respawn ship. Now the way you set that is go ahead and hit K. Go all the way over here to GPS. New from your current position, it will tell your name then just go ahead and change the name of it. So we're gonna go ahead and change this one to home. And now, if we go ahead and back off a little bit, as you can see, home is right there. Do not forget to do this because if you do, and you have something set up here, like you have resources and everything, you will not be able to find your way back. But right now, the asteroid has nothing on it, so it's not that big a deal. So every time that you go to an asteroid, let me see, I think I see a resource right here. So you go to an asteroid, you find some resource on it, who knows, what is that, cobalt? Let me see, let me get out my drill. No, it's nickel, my bad, it's nickel. So now that we found nickel and we know nickel is in this asteroid, we're going to go ahead and go to GPS, new from current position, and go ahead and mark this one as nickel. So that way we can find this resource again if we need to. Also, let's say we go to an asteroid and there is absolutely nothing on it. Let's go to this one since it's close. So you're looking around the asteroid and you're not detecting anything. There's absolutely nothing that you can find. So going around this asteroid, there's actually iron on it. But we'll say that iron doesn't exist. There's nothing here. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and mark that as well so that way you know that you check that asteroid and you don't do it again. Waste your time a little bit. So we're just going to go new from current position and this one, since nothing was here, we're going to type nothing. Now that's when we're doing it with the hand drill and then later on when we have a ship, like a respawn ship with a stronger detector, if I could find my base. With the stronger detector on it, we can come back here and see if maybe we just missed something. So when I play this game, I like to set it up in stages. Right now, we are in stage one. When we spawn in in the respawn ship, that is stage zero. Uh, get the respawn ship built to where it is, that would be stage one. Next episode, we need to go into stage two, which is trying to get ourselves to tier three. Now, there's a couple different ways we can go about that, but I'll have to show that next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.